What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a very interesting little uh, addition to my Belgian beer series. What we're brewing today is not really a traditional Belgian beer style um, as defined by like the BJCP. It is a Belgian style of beer though that is quite distinct, quite unique and quite easy to find. Um, and that is the Belgian brown ale or the brune. This is not the Eau de Bruin style which is a type of long soured blended beer. Um, this is just simply a brown ale made with Belgian ingredients. Most cafes in Belgium are going to have like 10 beers, but uh, at the very minimum, they're going to have at least a blonde and a brown. I think the most common example and probably one of the best known examples of a Belgian brown ale is the Leffe Brune, uh, which is the brown Leffe. Uh, you could find this in the US pretty easily, and it's also quite available overseas as well. At the end of the day, it's a dark Belgian beer, but it's not quite a Trappist ale. There's a lot of things that are slightly different about it. It's a lower ABV beer, and it has a nice distinct brown color. Sometimes it's hazy, sometimes it's not, but it really doesn't have all of those huge esters and complex flavors that you get out of a Trappist ale, nor does it have the extra intense fermentation schedule either. It is more of just a basic brown ale that is highly digestible, but still has some of those lovely Belgian yeast characters, just not in a overwhelming way. Now, Belgian Trappist dark ales are gonna be a little bit more on the sugary, kind of molasses caramely character. This is gonna be a little bit more of a toastier character. So the flavors are gonna align more with chocolate and toastiness as opposed to raisins and molasses and that sort of thing. As long as you make those distinctions between a Trappist ale and this type of beer, I think you're gonna make a pretty good brown ale. It's not exactly a summer beer, but we're heading into fall and that's kind of the idea behind this particular brew and the timing of it. So before we jump into the recipe, I just wanna thank a couple different organizations for helping make this video possible. First of all, Northern Brewer. Northern Brewer is a great place to get all your ingredients that you need for your particular batch of beer. They provided the ingredients for this one, so big thank you to them. It's also a great place to go for equipment and also knowledge. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply. They make the system that I've actually been using for the last year and a half or so. It it is a fantastic system available in both 120 and 240 volt options. Um, I'm using the 240 volt system today. Great people, great customer service, and great YouTube channel as well, so check them out. So for our recipe, we're gonna be starting out with eight pounds of franco Belgia's Pilsner Malt. This is a typical Belgian Pilsner Malt. You can also use Dingemans or you can use Castle. I just recommend using a Belgian Pilsner Malt if you can. To that, I am adding one pound of Weyermann Bark Munich Malt. We're gonna add half a pound of Belgian aromatic malt, half a pound of special B, half a pound of victory malt, which is gonna get you that kind of toastiness. And then we're adding two ounces of Carafa 3 Special to dial in that color and get it a little darker. And then on top of that, we're adding one pound of D90 candy syrup to help dry out the beer a little bit, as typical with Belgian styles, and also to add a little bit of nice kind of fig flavors. For our hops, we're gonna be uh, hopping this relatively moderately um, with traditional European hops. Starting out with a first we're hopping edition of one ounce of Saws, followed by two ounces of Hallertau Mittelfruer, which is gonna go in at 10 minutes to get some floral character, and then two ounces of Styrian Goldings going in at zero minutes, which is gonna give a little bit of an herbal spicy character, uh, almost reminiscent of coriander. For the water profile in this one, I'm targeting a water profile that's actually slightly different than some of the other Belgian beers that I've been making. Um, I want a little bit more fullness in this. I want a little bit more roundness to the mouthfeel, um, and I still want it to be nice and dry and obviously quite malty. So what we're doing is we're taking our standard Belgian water profile that I've been using for the last several beers and adding a little bit of sodium chloride to it. So the water profile that results from that is 60 parts per million of calcium, 7 parts per million of magnesium, 26 parts per million of sodium, 120 parts per million of chloride, and 62 parts per million of sulfate, 0 parts per million of bicarbonate. To get that water profile, I am adding two grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, five grams of calcium chloride, and then two grams of sodium chloride to the mash water. That should get us that profile. It's added to eight gallons of spring water. Um, you can use distilled water as well if you want, or RO water as well. It's gonna get you similar results. The spring water is just a little bit easier, it's a little bit cheaper. It's got a few residual minerals in it as well that help out with yeast health uh, and things like that. So I'm just choosing to use spring water in this case. It 
trust me, it's fine if you use distilled or RO, it's just as good. For our yeast on this one, this is where we're starting to deviate off of what I've done in the past for Belgian beers. We're gonna be using Y yeast 3522. This is the Ardennes Ale strain. This is the same strain as Imperial Gnome. This is theoretically the yeast that comes from the Le Chouf Brewery. Le Chouf is pretty famous for a lot of their uh, particular non-Trappist styles, uh, and they make some excellent beers. The Ardennes strain is not quite as expressive as some of the Trappist strains out there. It does get you a nice balanced character with some spicy clove and bubblegum kind of characters as well, which is kind of what we're trying to get. It, we don't want a ton of yeast character. We want it to be recognizably Belgian, but not over the top. Uh, and that's the whole point of using a different strain here. For the mash schedule on this one, we are using the same mash schedule I've been using for most of these. Um, it is a simple step mash, 148 for 45 minutes, 158 for 45 minutes, followed by a mash out at 170. What this does is it gets the beer to ferment out really nice and dry, but also gives a ton of really good head retention um, and lacing. This is something that's incredibly important in the presentation of a Belgian style of beer, and uh, it's something that has happened every single time that I have used this step mash schedule. So uh, it does help quite a bit in terms of forming a really nice rocky head. So everything's all set now to go get mashed in. Let's go ahead and start this brew day. I added eight gallons of spring water to my claw hammer supply 240 volt system and I started to heat it up to the mash temperature, the first rest temperature of 148. While I did this, I measured out my water salts and added those to the mash as well as milled out my grain. Once the water had reached 148 Fahrenheit, I mashed in with my grain bill, making sure to stir it thoroughly and get rid of any dough clumps. After letting the mash recirculate for about 10 minutes, I went ahead and took a pH measurement and I saw a pH of 5.46, which was pretty much right on target, so didn't need to worry about adding any sort of lactic acid for pH correction. I let the mash continue at 148 for 45 minutes and then I ramped it up to the next rest temperature of 158 for another 45 minutes before mashing out at 170 Fahrenheit for 15 more minutes. Once the mash out was complete and the wort was running clear, I went ahead and I pulled the grain basket out of the mash. I let that drain for about 15 minutes while firing up my boil kettle to a temperature just below boiling to avoid a boil over. As soon as the grain basket began draining, I added my first wort hop addition, which was one ounce of saws. This sat in the wort as it was slowly heating up to a boil, and we actually did nothing until 10 minutes were left in the boil. 50 minutes later, I added my 10 minute hop addition, which was two ounces of Hallertau Mittelfrühe, and uh, then I also added in a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient. I also added in my one pound of D90 candy syrup at this time and, uh, and was sure to stir thoroughly to ensure it was completely dissolved and did not scorch on the bottom of the boil kettle. 10 minutes later, I added my zero minute hop addition and I killed the boil. And the zero minute hop addition was two ounces of Styrian Goldings. At this time, I began to whirlpool my kettle and start piling the tube into a nice neat cone on the center before chilling. I let that continue for about 15 minutes and then I began to chill down to my target pitch temperature. I measured an OG of about 1061, which was pretty much right on target. And then once I transferred into the fermenter, I went ahead and I pitched my yeast and I left it to ferment. So for the fermentation on this beer, it's not too complicated, but you do want to make sure you're taking care of it. So a Belgian ale like this needs to attenuate nice and thoroughly. Uh, you need to make sure that it gets dry, but not too dry at the very end. So try to keep the yeast warm if you can. I'm going to be pitching my yeast at 68 Fahrenheit and then letting it free rise all the way up to however high it wants to go. This is essentially the same exact fermentation schedule that I've been doing over the last several Belgian brews, and that's simply because it works. This is how Belgian yeast really have evolved to ferment. The hotter you go with the yeast, 
you're gonna create more esters. Esters are fruity flavors and uh, notes like bubble gum, basically, are gonna be parts of the esters. Uh, if you ferment cooler, you can have a slower fermentation. Your yeast can go a little bit slower and they might not ferment all the way down, but you're also gonna produce more phenols. Phenols are gonna be things like clove and spices like coriander as well are gonna come out that way. Also, unfortunately, sometimes some like Band-Aid flavors can result as a result of fermenting a little bit too low. So what you wanna do is try and target a range that's gonna do a good blend of those things, but really, just more than anything, I highly recommend just letting the yeast do what it wants to do. So pitch at 68, which is a fine fermentation temperature to start out at. Once the yeast gets going, it's gonna generate its own little bit of heat, and that's going to increase the fermentation temperature uh, kind of in a little bit of a runaway cycle for a little while. Um, and it probably will go up to about 72 to 75 degrees, depending on how much yeast you pitch. Also, a few more levers to pull here. If you underpitch your yeast, you're gonna have a little bit more ester character, and you're also gonna have probably an increased fermentation temperature. They will go through more cycles of reproduction and generate more heat in that process. If you overpitch, you're not gonna get as much yeast character at it could be a cleaner beer as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to really dial in the fermentation character of your particular beer. A couple additional notes in this one as well. It's a Belgian beer. You really should be using a Belgian yeast because you're not gonna get the Belgian characteristic that this beer needs from any other type of yeast. So there are a few alternatives to use if you can't find the right strain. Uh, it's fine. You can use any of the Trappist strains if you want to, but in this case, I would really recommend fermenting them a bit cooler. Uh, you want to keep that ester production down. You don't want this beer becoming banana bread. You want it to be a little bit more of a spicy clove kind of character and having a little bit of bubblegum ester. Not too much, though. Too much ester can definitely turn this beer into more of a Dunkelweizen kind of character almost, which is fine if you like that kind of beer. I do, um, but I am going for a very different beer. And if I don't target, if I don't meet that target, I'm gonna be a little bit upset. If you do use the Trappist yeast, just try to keep it a little bit cooler. There are alternative manufacturers for the strain I'm using today. You can use WLP 550 from White Labs, or you can use Imperial B45 Gnome. Uh, these are gonna be relatively the same strain. Alternatively, if you wanna use a Trappist Ale strain, you can use WLP 500, WLP 530, YEAST 3787, YEAST 12, 14, Imperial Monastic, Imperial uh, Triple Double, or you can use uh, one of the dry yeast strains available like Lalamand Abbey or T58 from Fermentis. All of those are Trappist strains and all of them are gonna behave relatively similar, producing high levels of esters. Um, and that's going to change the character of the beer a little bit. But just plan for it and you should be all right. Otherwise, if you wanna imitate a Belgian strain, but not necessarily use a Belgian yeast, I would actually try maybe using a Hefeweizen strain. Maybe try throwing in Y-Yeast uh, 3068, the uh, Vine Steffenweizen, or Imperial Stefan, or Lalaman Muta Classic. All of those are gonna give you a little bit of banana clove character, which may actually work pretty well in this beer. If you do that, let me know, and I'm curious about that. A couple other things to think about here is try not to pitch too hot. Uh, it's gonna increase your ester activity. Try not to use Kvike. It's not gonna make a very similar beer to a Belgian style at all. In my case, I will be pitching this one at 68 Fahrenheit with YS 3522, our den strain, and I'll be letting it go for about 10 days to 14 days, however long it wants to go until it hits its final gravity. Um, and I'm letting it free rise to whatever temperature it feels like it needs to go to. Uh, I'm not even gonna cap this one because I don't think it's gonna even get that high. After about 10 to 14 days, I am gonna go ahead and keg this and uh, get it carbonated up and ready to go. Should not take too long to get ready. It's not gonna be a particularly high ABV beer, uh, so I don't think it's gonna need too much cellaring time. But if it does need a little bit more time and it is tasting a bit green, I'll just let it sit in the keg for another week or two before it starts to taste really good. Then we'll carbonate and put it on tap and uh, I'll catch you guys soon enough. So, till then, cheers. Fermentation for this one was a bit troublesome, actually. Uh, it didn't take too long to ferment all of the sugars out. However, I was tasting some pretty significant off flavors as I was sampling the batch, and I left it in the fermenter for a few more weeks in hope that it would clear up some of these off flavors before kegging. Uh, unfortunately, that was not entirely successful, and we'll talk about that later in the tasting section. But nevertheless, I let it age for about four weeks, and then I kegged it, seeing a final gravity of 1010, putting us at about 6.8% ABV. I ended up not really naming this beer at all because it really wasn't deserving of a name. And it ended up at about 6.8% ABV and 25 IBUs.
So for the appearance of the beer, it is a somewhat nut brown kind of color. Um, it's sort of trending on the lighter side of brown, actually. Um, very murky, opaque kind of uh, character. A little bit of a tan white head that doesn't really build up too much. Uh, it does leave a small layer on the surface, but it's really not uh, piling up very high. I think that's because they didn't really carbonate this all that highly. The aroma of the beer is quite pleasant, actually. It's uh, kind of got a little bit of a kind of bubblegummy note. Um, there's some dark bready toastiness. And then a kind of uh, fruity character. It's a little bit of a sharp fruity character. The mouth feels quite light. Um, it's a little bit fuller feeling, it's a little bit softer feeling than some of the other Belgian beers that I've made recently. It actually has a really nice kind of softness character to it. Um, I think it's actually the kind of the right mouthfeel for this beer style. It's definitely a little bit fuller than your gold nails, but still light and drinkable uh, compared to some of the uh, more typical brown ale categories. So now let's head in for flavor. So right off the bat, there's definitely a significant amount of um, bitterness, uh, actually. There's a bit of a sharp fruity character in there as well, but that fades relatively quickly, and then we're left with more of a bready malt base. And that has some really nice kind of bubblegum esters on, layered on top of it. It's semi-sweet tasting. Um, it actually has a pretty nice profile to it after that initial bitterness. There's some layered caramel notes in there, a little bit of like a candy-like caramel. I do think that's due to the candy sugar that I added, uh, but it's not a very prominent flavor, to be honest. And lastly, there's a very, very small amount of roasted malt character in this, which there really shouldn't be. Um, it's definitely not the right thing. That bit of carafa that I put in there for color really came through, unfortunately, and it was rather unmasked in its flavor. It's just a hint of the roastiness, but the fact that I can taste it is kind of a problem. So overall, the beer is drinkable. It's definitely not my favorite. It's not highly drinkable. It's not really all that great. Um, it's just kind of a ho-hum home brew. So that's due to a couple things. I think the recipe is okay, um, but the issue here is that there's a bunch of flavors in here that shouldn't be in here and could have been avoided, and that's due to some issues in the brewing process. So let's go over that now in the potential improvements. So when I talk about this, there's a lot of things on this list. <laughs> so the first thing that happened was, well, I made a critical error. I pitched my yeast far too hot. Um, Belgian yeast, while it likes to ferment hot, it doesn't necessarily like to be pitched hot. That's one of the most critical things about getting a good yeast profile in a Belgian beer, is not pitching it at 70, 80 degrees, pitching it as, as cold as you can get it, and then bringing it up throughout the course of fermentation to those higher temperatures. So what happened was I was brewing a bunch of Kvike beers before I made this one, and I wasn't really thinking too much during my brewing process, and I let that work get down to about 85 degrees, and then I chucked my yeast in like it was a Kvike because I wasn't paying attention. This is what happens when you do that. The sharp, fruity bite at the beginning and that sharp, fruity aroma is entirely due to pitching that yeast far too hot creating some fusel alcohols and a significant amount of acetaldehyde. That is an issue and that's not going away in this beer over time. Secondly, there's not all that much malt complexity in this beer that gives that carafa that I put in for color not that much flavor to hide behind. And as a result, it's coming through with a sort of uh, semi-roasty note. So um, I think there's a thing I could do to fix that and also to kind of fix the color because it is a little bit lighter than I wanted it to be. Uh, and that would just be adding a darker grade of candy syrup in instead of uh, what I had in here. So that would probably help out a lot because that gives you extra color, but also gives you extra complexity, especially if you get like the D180 in there, that really brings out a ton of those nice, dark, raisiny, fruity characters. Now I would also add in a little extra Munich malt and perhaps maybe some dark Munich malt at that for some extra kind of richness in that particular part of the flavor. 
So this is just really missing a lot. And so overall, when it comes down to it, this beer is okay, and it could have been a lot better. I could have pitched my yeast at the proper temperature and probably got a lot nicer character in terms of the fermentation. I could have added a little extra malt complexity in there and then gotten rid of the carafa for color, and that probably would have helped a lot in terms of making this beer a lot more like a Belgian brown ale. This just really tastes like a standard crappy brown home brew. Uh, it has that classic home brew flavor, which is really just the fusel alcohols and acetaldehyde production from pitching your yeast way too hot. I'm honestly pretty upset that this beer didn't turn out so good because Leffe Brune is like one of my favorite things ever. Um, and unfortunately, this is not even close to that. Uh, it's a completely different beer at this point. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was useful to you in some way, shape or form. And if it was, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you want to help support the channel, there's a number of great ways to do so, including but not limited to my t-shirt store, uh, which is down in the description box. That's a great way you can get this design as well as many others. Also, I have a Patreon. I have a uh, channel memberships option. I also have a super thanks button if you want to give that way. All of those things are very appreciated. It helps me keep doing what I'm doing, gives me the motivation to keep moving forward. If you also want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, so do check those pages out for some more frequent content updates. Anyway, guys, if you're still here, I really do appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me that you're watching all the way to the end, even if it's not a complete success in the brew day. So thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. So until then, cheers.